Welcome to this tutorial on forms in PHP. Through this tutorial we'll look at building forms that are interactive so we can collect information from the user to later process it through our PHP script. So let's get underway. A really good resource for developing forms is at Mozilla. So if you head into web docs and also look at um, input elements you'll be able to find very useful tools and also suggestions of different types of elements that we can use in a form. Now in PHP we normally start with our normal PHP script and our close tag. But when creating forms in PHP we can actually just use the HTML element side of it. We also don't require the boilerplate so we don't need to put in HTML, declare the document type etc, have a header. This way we can include it in another PHP document to assist us in modulating our code for security and ease of development. Now to create a form we need to start with the form element. When I enter in the form element you'll notice that we've got form class, action, it then also has its method. We're going to be interested in the action and also the method in this tutorial. We're not going to be worried about using any classes for stylizing. Now one of the first things we can do on a form is actually add in a label. Now a label allows us to show some text on the screen. So in this case here I can put personal information and at the end of this line place a break tag. Now with every form there's always a submit button. This is our action. So we need an input event and the type of event we would like is actually submit. We can remove the name and the value for this submit button and this becomes our action button. So let's have a look at this. So I'm just going to save this and now run this form.php on our server. So when the form is open you'll actually see our label and our submit button. After hitting the submit button you can see that we've actually been returned an error. It was unable to find the index.html file on this server. And the reason for this is the action button was looking for index.html. Now if we wanted to process PHP on this page we could actually call the page itself. So for the time being we're just going to enter in form.php. So when I click the submit button, the action is to call the form.php, which is itself. So let's save and run this now. You notice when I refresh, or go back and refresh the page, it asks me to update. When I hit submit, you'll notice that there's no error message now because it's looked for the form.php. What we'd like to do is get the username. So I'm going to put username and then I'm going to ask for an input and this time it is going to be text. Now once I've got the text from the user, let's have a look at this, so I'm just saving and refreshing the page. You'll see I can enter in the text here. We need to actually store this information somewhere. So to do that we're actually going to put it in the name and we're going to call it user underscore name. So the information that's entered into the text area is actually stored in username as a variable. At the end of this I'm going to place a break tag. Once I've done that I can also maybe ask for a password. Now in asking for a password we can actually ask for another type of input and when we go have a look at our Mozilla developer comments you can see down the bottom here a single text line field whose values is obscured. So by using the input type password we'll be able to collect the password from the user and store it in user underscore password. So you notice that I'm using pothole case to create my variable names. Therefore, all words are in lowercase. Any spaces have an underscore to represent the space. This developer principle will be very consistent throughout my coding in PHP. At the end of this, once again, I would like the break tag to ensure that the submit button sits underneath our password. So I'm just going to save this and now run it. When I refresh the page, you'll notice I now have a password there. So I can enter in like admin and then I can put a password in there and you notice that I can't see the password because it's obscured. I can still hit submit and refresh that page if I needed to do so. There are other inputs that we can use in forms. One of the more interesting ones could be favorite color. 
Now this input will be of color. We can actually store the color value in user underscore color. And once again, I'm gonna place a break tag on the end. Save the page. When it's refreshed now, you'll notice that I have a color picker. From here, I can actually select the color I would like to use. I could store their color, say for font color. I could use it to drive the themes of my website. So this is one of the HTML5 elements that have been added to the language. Now, before we go any further, I thought I'd discuss the difference between the post method and the get method. It's a good suggestion that whenever you create a form in PHP that you use the post method. The other method is get. When I run the get method, you'll notice when I submit the information that under the get method, you can actually see the values up the top. So the username is admin, the user password is Earl Marsden, and the user color at the moment is 23EBB8FF. You will see this get method used on such searches as Google, where you see the keywords at the top, where if we use the post method, You'll notice on the submission that you don't see the variable data, but the data is still contained within the variables that we saw before. So for security reasons, it's much better to use the post method. Now for a form, one of the most common ones we would use is actually a checkbox. So the input type will be checkbox. We can ensure that the checkbox is checked by putting a required. So when we run the form now, if you haven't checked the checkbox, it'll ask you to do this. We can also force the checkbox to be checked by default by putting the word checked in. And therefore when the page is refreshed, you'll see that it starts with a check in the checkbox. Now the good thing about these checkboxes, we can use it for something like a label. And this label will actually be for something like I've read the terms and conditions. And then place a break tag on the end. And when we run this now, you will see that we have the terms and conditions that we can check. So if they don't check it, they can't proceed. And if they do check it, we can then process the form. There is one more form element that I find useful. And this is for something like messages for the, for the developer. So if you're looking at getting a email from a client, etc., or you're doing a feedback form, then this becomes very useful. So what it's gonna be is a text area. And this text area, we can give it a name. So I'm just gonna keep it as a message. Then we've got the number of rows, the number of columns. So this gives the rows is how tall the text area will be, and the columns is how wide it's gonna be. In this case, it's 80. And once again, I'm gonna put a break tag on the end. So then the submit button sits underneath. So when we run this, you can see that we've actually got a text box that is flexible that we can stretch out and shrink down. You see a lot of this on websites today. The last thing I wanna do is just fix this little cosmetic area here by putting a BR tag here, saving that and refreshing the page once more. So the last thing I wanna talk about in this tutorial is about security. Now at the moment we're submitting the form back to itself so the last thing I'd like to talk about is form security. Currently we're submitting all the information back to the current form. You would have heard the term character injection or SQL injection, and we can actually stop some of those special character injections by starting some PHP here. And what we'd like to do is echo some information. 
And what we'd like to echo in this case is a HTML special character string. And what we want to do with this command is actually submit the page to itself. And therefore it turned quotes into the ASCII code characters. It would, so it changed hyphens into ASCII characters to stop them being injected into our forms. So what we'd like to do is submit this page rather than to the page itself. We're going to submit it to the server. But in particular, when we submit it to the server, we want to submit it to the PHP underscore self. And then close the PHP tag. So in summary, it removes any special characters by submitting the page back to itself on the server side. So we can save this page and run this. And you'll notice that there was no errors in the submission of our form to the page itself. What we'll do in the next tutorial is look at how we can use the data that we're passing through the post. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Remember, use the resources on the net to have a look at the different types of input elements there are. Remember to use the post method when creating forms on PHP. And also make sure that you're putting in some security for code injection. So I hope you found this tutorial useful in the different types of input methods you can use on forms. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and also have a look around my YouTube channel for other useful videos.